for the Saturday before Christmas. Now, the fact, the fact that, you know, for the rest of the year, it is from one-third to two-thirds empty. That's irrelevant. It's always maximized, the maximum efficiency. Now, the other thing that this code is terribly concerned about is that the uses not be mixed. It's very, very important to the planners of Virginia Beach that everything here be retail. This is a shopping center or, or a retail area. The offices are where you work are elsewhere. The residential is elsewhere. Everything that you see here, whether it's big or small, this is a very big mall here, and then there's a tiny little bank and a couple of medium-sized um, eating places. Everything here is of a single use, which is retail. Now, let's talk about this as an environment. It's not that these planners don't care about people. Obviously, there's a sidewalk code somewhere here. <laughs> but you know perfectly well from experience that only indigents are to be found in places like that. If you actually see somebody halfway decently dressed uh, walking in the sidewalk, you stop to help them out, because obviously some problem. It is actually... That kind of environment, is, it is embarrassing to be seen walking, admit it, in a place like this. Only the underclass is found as a pedestrian here. There's a sidewalk, but it's a completely unworkable sidewalk. Now, obviously here, there's also a landscape ordinance, <laughs> and even a tree preservation ordinance. <clears throat> and it's important to say this, and the signs don't look too bad. You don't see too many signs. It's important to say this because uh, after one generation of this kind of planner, of planning, most planners have said, have looked at it and said, this, this doesn't look so good. Let's pass additional ordinances, for example, that require trees in the parking lot and require berms. But that isn't the issue at all. The problem with this is not that it is ugly. The problem is that it doesn't work. It can't be sustained. And I'm going to show you some beautiful suburban sprawl later on. So don't be confused by sign ordinances, berms, and landscape. Those are fine, but they're only cosmetic. They really don't get at the heart of the problem. The heart of the problem is that in the end, in the end, this cannot be sustained. Because regardless of the number of lanes that are built, there are never enough lanes. What a city needs to decide, a city like yourself, is whether you want traffic congestion is a constant. It's a constant because traffic, and this has been known since the 1950s, traffic will grow to fill capacity. What you need to decide is whether the city of San Antonio would like to have its, its uh, allotment of traffic congestion at four lanes, or whether you would like your traffic congestion at eight lanes, or your traffic congestion at 12 lanes, or at 24 lanes, or, as is being proposed in Miami, they would like to deliver our traffic congestion at 44 lanes, which is what I-95 has to be. But traffic congestion is a constant, and it is not solved, and never has been solved, and cannot be solved by the building of highways. It is solved by mixed-use planning. What you do is you eliminate trips or you shorten trips. You do not build highways, because as soon as you build highways, people use them. Technically, what happens is that as long as traffic flows, people make basically idiotic decisions about where they live relative to where they work. They will, if, if, it, is only five, if, it's, if it is only 20 minutes to get from the workplace to the house that I like, I will buy that house because it has skylights over the bathroom or because you know it's two dollars less per square foot or whatever, rather than factoring in that that 20 minutes is a large part of my life. And besides, that 20 minutes turns into 40 minutes and then turns into an hour and then into an hour and a half commute. When you have friction in traffic, people begin, people factor in that additional uh, information, how far am I from work? And that is ultimately the solution or at least the stabilization of the traffic problem. Now take the alternate system here. This is Old Town Alexandria. It is uh, laid out, it was laid out by George Washington's father. And George Washington was active here, administering the code and so forth. And the curious thing about this is that whenever I show it, people think that it is a form of Williamsburg, that somehow to live in a place like that you need to wear costumes or be government subsidized or put up with incredible inconvenience or something or other. You know, have outhouses instead of toilets. But in fact, 
In fact, these are very real people living, working, and shopping here. People with kids and jobs and everything. Let me describe how different this is from this because it's backwards in almost every way. If you look at this area here, all the buildings here, what they have in common is that they're small. What they don't have in common is that they're a single use. See, over here you have houses, you have boarding houses, you have bed and breakfast inns, you have corner stores, you have um, uh, pr uh, medical practitioners, you have uh, architects and lawyers in operation, but you even have churches. What they have in common is that the buildings are all small, therefore they are compatible. This is completely different from the kind of coding that occurs here, in which the buildings can be large or small, but they're a single use. Over in this area, there are buildings that are medium-sized, and then buildings that are very large. You see, it's small buildings with small buildings, large buildings with large buildings. All of these things are compatible as long as the, use, as long as the sizes are similar. So, you see, the codes are written completely differently. The code that makes this place worries about how building or is concerned about how buildings behave in terms of physical size and disposition relative to the street. As long as the buildings are pulled up to the street and they're not over a certain size, they're compatible, as opposed to this, that cares very little about that. Well, that's the private realm. That's how the private realm works here. Now, the public realm is also different. This, these streets here are all small and they're all complex. Traffic flows slowly in them. This street is a very simple street. It's really a highway. It's, it's a very simple street. Only one thing happens here. The only thing that happens here is that cars flow. Pedestrians don't. Trees don't exist. Buildings don't align this street. It's only for cars. The public realm is only for cars in this model. Here, the public realm contains not only cars that move, but cars that park, uh, trees on the s sidewalks and buildings. It's a public realm which is, because it's complex, is friendly to both cars and pedestrians. How is this achieved? It's achieved because it's a network of streets, you see. There are many, many different ways of getting from anywhere to anywhere else. As a result of that, no one street has to be large. This system, which is a system of collector streets, has very few streets that are active because the pods feed into collectors and the collectors feed onto highways. So all of these have to be very large because very few streets are actually through streets. That's how you can get an entirely different, that's how you can get the sort of the miraculous feel of traffic flowing slowly and being friendly to pedestrians because there are many, many different ways uh, to do it. These are some of the images that you find in, um, in Alexandria. Notice that this corner store is approximately the same in size as the townhouses, therefore it is compatible. If it were a shopping center, it would be a problem. If it were a 7-Eleven with the parking in front, it would be a problem. But this is perfectly compatible. And I have dozens and dozens and dozens of retail components like this in the middle of neighborhoods that instead of being considered a blight, are actually considered everybody's favorite gathering place. It's the social center. This is, a this is a lawyer's office, which as you can see, is perfectly compatible to the housing on either side. Now I could give a, an entire description of this. I could show you apartment buildings that are compatible, all sorts of buildings. And you've all seen them, you know what this is like, but it demonstrates the issue of physical compatibility rather than functional compatibility. Now an aerial photograph of two town centers, the old model and the new model. This, these are actually the retail components, the retail portions of the town centers. This is what the Urban Land Institute calls a neighborhood center. It's a precisely described series of stores which contain such things as the bank, the video store, the two inexpensive restaurants, the food store, um, the, the hardware, you know, these stores that neighborhoods actually need. They're 30, 35,000 square feet. Um, the, the problem is not this in itself, because this, in fact, is the neighborhood.